welcome back to Hardcore Ultimate Iron Man. The starting of the house is completed, but there's still plenty of things that need improving. And we're going to start working towards a lot of them. Unsurprisingly, as it is Iron Man mode, there are a lot of steps involved. But before we get to that, it's time to get some of our equipment back that we got rid of to make construction training easier. And to get rid of the construction training supplies. Don't need a hammer and saw. Those are very easy to get back. We're also going to be dropping the plank sack. We have a very large amount of points to get one of those back whenever we want to train construction again. This is an unfortunate waste of points, but it is recoverable. You can't put this anywhere. You can't store it in a house or anything. As convenient as that would be, which is unfortunate for us. So, it just goes on the floor. At this point, we have a very large amount of inventory space, which is nice. But it's not going to stay that way for long. First change here, we are going back to the Staff of Fire. The Earth Staff was fantastic for saving an inventory space for teleports to house. But the fire staff's more useful. This will mean that we need to go get some earth runes, but overall I think this is the correct choice. Partially because the fire staff is just good for doing other things, and also because with earth runes We'll actually have a teleport out instead of having to put on the staff first. Which, in a lot of situations, would not be ideal. Let's get a couple of those, a couple of those. We still have a good amount of money, which will make things easier on us. As we navigate this, I'm not going back to the agility pyramid times. So there is the Staff of Fire, which we are immediately going to go throw on a table. As is always the case for us, we've got combat items we need to go to Entrana, so they're going on the table. There's always a possibility that somebody will come up here, pick up all our stuff. But these are all somewhat replaceable. Getting a dragon scimitar back would be a bit of a pain. There's just a, per there's just a person right here that saw me walk out. No. No, I don't think that's gonna work. I'm taking my stuff back. I'm hopping worlds. And then we're going to Entrana. I looked at everything that I needed to do. And I think this is an okay time to retrieve the Dramon Staff. It's just so nice for getting around. It really is pretty much worth it. So now that we have the Dramon Branch back, just need to go pick up my stuff, and then we can continue to the next thing. Knife from the Lumbridge Kitchen gets us the Dramon Staff. And then Purdue here give us back our Ardoin cloak for 200 coins. That's honestly worth it instead of going to Ardoin. We're still keeping the Xerix talisman around since we need that for construction. Ultimately it's going to be a little bit of work to get the 5,000 Lizardman things 
we check here, we've got 103. And we might be able to take those out. But either way, it's still a very nice teleport to have. I'd like to get the infinite version of that eventually. But right now, I'm working for a different amulet. And possibly two different amulets. Depends how things go. Back down here in the ham storeroom. Went and got some nature runes to do some alking here. But there is the amulet of power and the amulet of magic. For specifically magic, the amulet of magic is better, shockingly. An extra plus four accuracy. Nothing in the defense department, so there is something to say for maybe power is just better in general. But for now, I'm going to go with magic. Full mystic and the Zamrak cape from the house. 1500 fire strikes worth of runes. And we are going to go fight a very specific enemy. Salarin the Twisted. A level 70 Chaos Druid kind of guy who is only damageable with strike spells. A very, very particular enemy. Also, if you stand far enough away from him, he doesn't attack you anymore. Thank you, other Chaos Druid, for perfectly blocking. Additional bonus, the strike spells do more damage than normal against Salarin. And then when Salarin is dead, we can fight some regular Chaos Druids for a little bit. We need to kill Salarin for a very roundabout reason. Which I'll show when we get the drops we need. Didn't get the specific drop I'm looking for here. But the inventory is full of usable and eventually usable herbs here. So it is time to go get an ultimate Iron Man favorite. It is the looting bag. Now, it's not quite as user-friendly as it is for regular Ultimate Iron Man, where it is already in no way user-friendly. Typically, you would store stuff in the looting bag, and then you would die to get the stuff back out of the looting bag. We do not have such luxury. What with the whole hardcore thing. So instead, the only way for us to get items out of the looting bag is to destroy the looting bag in the wilderness. That makes all the items immediately visible to everyone else. So if we were going to get a huge number of different things in here, it would be highly difficult. Especially when we can't just have another looting bag ready to go. So we have to be pretty careful with what we put in here. For right now, it's going to be herbs, and I think the rune axe would probably be a good choice. Maybe the nature runes too. Save a little bit of inventory space. Things that I can get back later without too much hassle. But that is all also glossing over the fact that to get the looting bag, we need to go to the wilderness. Or maybe last man standing, but honestly, I'm not even sure if that's a thing. We can fight some thugs. Combat level 82. It's in here in our full mystic. Like an absolute mess. 
Anyways. Looting bags are not too rare. So we can get that nice and quick. And there it is. These thugs here also drop death and chaos runes. So there's going to be plenty of space in the looting bag here. So might as well. Yes, yes, yes. I understand. I understand how the looting bag works. And it works really strangely. All right, let's settings on the looting bag all herbs nature runes death runes cast runes and the rune axe and now we can get out of the wilderness there are situations where you can't have a looting bag so this is not a permanent storage we can really use by any means but it'll work for now. Back to Salarin. There it is. The Sinister Key. One in 12 drop here at Salarin. So we can go use this to get what we're looking for. But first, I'm going to Finish the trip here, get a nice full inventory. Got a second sinister key there, so that's good. So down here in the same dungeon, just need to make some inventory space, open this chest, and get a whole bunch of herbs and poison. We can open the chest again with our second key, and there you go. Now I will be dropping the Quarms and Aventos, since we really can't make too much use of that right now. And I'm going to go quickly get myself not poisoned. That'd be a good idea. So I'll we'll pick up the Anti-Poison in Castle Wars. That'll work. Well, not in Castle Wars, nearby, but still. But as much as that gave us a bunch more of these herbs that we do want to use. Oh, and also leaving our house cured our poison. So that, that solves that problem. Fantastic. The real thing we're looking for here is the Torstals. Grimy Torstals. One of the very few ways to get Torstals this early in the game. Another potential option was high-level mutated Zygomites, but that requires more Slayer levels and not really too viable at this point. But each time you get a key there, that is one Grimy Torstal. Now a Grimy Torstal isn't actually what we need, so it's another step that we need to take. Down here in Narda, we can get the Torstals cleaned. But since we haven't completed, I believe it's the Hard Desert Diary, we can't get noted potions cleaned. So we have to unnote the po well, herbs. We have to get the herbs unnoted here at the bank. That's the thing you can do. Unnoted, but you can't re-note things. Then we take the two unnoted herbs, get them cleaned for 200 coins each. And now we are prepared. A clean Torstal, given over to Dr. Jekyll, rewards you with a Stamina Potion 4. So we just need to wait around, or just do anything, waiting for Dr. Jekyll. Ten times. And once we've done that, we can use those ten stamina potions to upgrade our pool. And likely by the time we get to that, we'll also have the prayer potions required to upgrade it again. But getting the stamina potions is the hard part here. Also, of course, we need to get more torsals. So might as well just get that done here. 
and also collect more herbs over back at Salarin. And that is all we need. Ten clean torstals. Going to be storing nine of them in noted form to save inventory space, of course. And then in the looting bag, our total loot in terms of other herbs. 51 Guams, 38 Harlanders, 44 Ranars, and 26 Erits. Not too shabby. But now, for the stamina potions, all we can do is wait around and do other things while we wait for the random event that we need 10 times. So, we gotta go do something else. Goodbye, Magic Amulet. And hello, Blackjack. It is time, I've decided, for some thieving. Level 53 thieving. So we can do some blackjacking. We're also going to need food, which we can easily get down here at the bar. This is going to be filling up our inventory with jugs of wine. It's going to be great. We're also going to make some money here, so that's also a plus. There is level 65 thieving. My character is somehow managing to be focusing on this bandit as he walks around while I'm still in this interface. That's probably fine. But 65 thieving means we can move on from these bandits up here to Menophyte thugs. Closer to the bar here, more convenient for resupplying. Since we don't have any noted food that we could use, we're just getting a whole bunch of wine here. And the Menophyte Thugs are also significantly better experience. So that's good too. Now that I have my costume room well and truly established, we're now free to collect the random event costumes. There's the zombie gloves, zombie trousers, and beekeeper's gloves, which we can very easily go store. Previously, we could only store some parts, well, some sets, since the fancy dress box could only f hold so many. So we currently have the camo outfit completed and most of the beekeeper. Which we still can't take out until we get the beekeeper hat, but that's fine. And now we can start on storing in the zombie outfit. So that is very good. We take a look at the collection logs, other random events. We did get the mime pieces at some point, but we had to drop them since they wouldn't fit. So we need to get those again from another mime random. Looks like we have all of the stuff from the drill sergeant random though, so won't need to be doing that at least. And now we have more inventory space to continue thieving. Several concussions and a swimming pool full of wine later. There is 80 thieving. Our third 80 skill, following construction and agility. Interesting mix we have there. Well, that should be enough to get to what I'm trying to do here at a reasonable chance of success. Also, beekeeper's hat, so that's nice. Pretty sure that is the full beekeeper. So that will be another random event I don't need to do. 
Doesn't actually speed up any other random events, but still. Full set. And the bank pin, when I still don't have a bank. Eh. So I'm going to need to get some stuff together for what I needed this thieving for. Okay. We've got the full graceful on, because the rogues isn't going to do anything for us. We've got a lockpick from Rogues Den. We got a super anti-poison from the spawn near Castle Wars. Now we need a chisel, a needle, and some thread. A wide variety of items, for sure. These are all necessary to get the most out of. Stone chests in the Lizardmen Temple. We can watch people over here trying to get the Dragon Warhammer. We try picklocketing. Picklocketing? Picklocking. The stone chests. We should have a fairly decent chance of success here for 280 experience each time. And then that's immediately picklocketable. Pick lock it. Pick lockable. Yeah, whatever. Immediately can go again. And we're here for Lizardman fangs. You can get just one of them. And you can also get full talismans, which are worth 100. Don't know if this is going to be slower or faster than just fighting Lizardman. But it's good either way. Now we have three. Failing here doesn't damage you initially, but it can give you other problems. There's like a, I believe it'd be one in eight, they said on the wiki. Yep, you can just get teleported out. And then when you're out here, you get attacked by Lizardmen, who can damage you or poison you, or both. So that's what all these are for. The exact number of food that we're going to be bringing with us is going to be debatable, because we do need inventory space for some of the other drops here, like the fabric here. See, now we got two fabrics. We need a third one in order to make a hat. And that gives us some crafting experience, which is nice. 280 XP each time. Sometimes getting teleported. Sometimes avoiding the Lizardman. And this is also why Graceful is really nice for this. All of this running we have to do every time we get teleported. Overall, we should be able to steal from this chest over and over again. It also drops varieties of other things we don't want, which with our limited inventory space is just going to be a series of dropping things on the floor, unfortunately. But along with the fabric, we can also get a few uncut gems. That's what the chisel's for. So overall, this is going to be a bit of thieving and crafting XP. So that's nice. And there is the first talisman. Went slightly dry on that, but honestly, with the amount of this we're going to need to do, it should all even out in the long run. We can dismantle that for another hundred fangs. And conveniently, you can get your fangs back out of your talisman. So you can just store them in here for now. Save it in inventory space. It only maxes out at a thousand charges. So once we get to that, we either have to spend an extra inventory space or dismantle that talisman as well. Not a problem yet, though. But with 500 
things in there. That is one tenth of the way done. So that's something. You got a thieving level, a few crafting levels. So that's all working out. Food is pretty much useless here, so I got rid of all that. Just keeping some various items that I could possibly sell slash use slash drop. But this is a very doable thing to do in pretty much any situation. I can just hop back into the graceful, go get these items here. So we can come back to this whenever we've got time to just click on a chest a whole bunch of times. But I think it's time to work on some of the questing requirements that will let us make these improvements to our house. It's going to get demonic. Next time. Goodbye.